Yo, what's up? We are now sitting in the Porsche Taycan 4S and today I want to test range mode. So here we have all the different driving modes. Uh, normal is what you normally do. Use a uh, sport mode makes the car way more responsive and sport plus, well, I actually don't know, but we're going to test range mode today. So range mode will do various things. For example, it will put the air conditioning on eco uh, well, actually, it just happened to be an eco now. Uh, it will also lower the car. We can try it now, by the way. We can also use this one here to change the drive mode. So if you put it on range, you see this symbol? Okay, it disappeared. It lowers the car. <laughs> so it's actually quite low right now compared to normal mode. Uh, but the uh, most important thing is that the rear motor here, it has two... Uh, speed gearbox and in range mode it will lock it to the high gear which then it's a 8 to 1 gear ratio rather than uh, 14 to 1 if I remember correctly so now, now let's just start with a normal mode and uh, try a couple of runs and see what result we get okay on the climate control settings we set to 21 degrees Celsius auto and yeah, this one is, is you can actually customize a lot here. Uh, I might make a separate video about this. It's just so much stuff here. But okay, so it's not on eco mode right now. All right, off we go. All right, first run. Uh, I cruise at 90 kilometers per hour on the speedometer. And uh, actually the GPS speed is 89. So that's, uh, we're, okay, 88 to 89. Hmm, yeah. But let's just cruise at the 90. So uh, let's see then, and then I reset the trip meter and it will always be high in the beginning. Around one, around two, wow, very consistent results here. Hmm, should we go one more run? Yeah, just to test it. Round three, well, 207, okay. Uh, it was 209, 208, and then 207. So I guess we can say that 208 is the average then. And I don't know if we're going to do three runs with range. Well, we might as well. Okay, let's do now range mode. So go to, well, we can just select here much easier. Switch, poof. Range mode on. Okay, the car lowers. Oh, yeah. And then this one automatically goes into eco. I wonder if we can override it. Let's see, if you go to... This one, oh, it's I forgot this haptic feedback. Can we switch it off? Actually, you can. Ah, nice. You can override it. Yeah, good to know. Okay, first round of uh, range mode. It, it is actually lower, but this time I use uh, air conditioning on uh, on normal mode. So uh, yeah, now we see the difference here. Uh, let's try to put air conditioning on uh, eco then. Here you go, oh, there's also Eco Plus, but okay, let's try Eco Mode. Okay, then re reset and go again. Round two. Wow, 191. Okay, I was stuck behind a slow pickup truck, but that shouldn't mean too much. Okay, well, um, let's do one more run. Uh, because, you know, the explanation for this is that once you enter Eco Mode, it probably realized that, okay, we don't have to heat up that much. And then it spends less energy now, but once the temperature stabilizes, then it should be slightly higher. But again, this car is fitted with um, a heat pump and it is uh, 8.5 degrees Celsius outside. So it's not too bad. It's not winter, it's spring-ish. Okay, I guess one more run then. Uh -huh. I just noticed that when we are cruising like now, you see the diagram, at least according to the diagram here, uh, it's running only in the front motor. So the back motor is just resting. So <laughs> the gear on the back motor shouldn't matter too much. Actually, I should have paid attention when I was driving in normal mode to see how the motors react then. Damn, look at that. 190 watt hour per kilometer. All right. Huh, now, um, so we can, I guess we can assume that as long as you've used the eco mode here, then, then you... Uh, <laughs> You only spend 190. Actually, I'm a little bit surprised why the air conditioning sucks so much. But okay, um, now let's try something then. What if I switch off HVAC? Uh, how do this? Switch it off. 
and then drive at uh, what speed should we try? 60. Let's try 60 kilometers per hour just to see how low we can get the consumption. <laughs> You've probably never seen a Porsche drive this slow before, but oh, what the heck? Nine! Nine! There was a voice control that kicked in, but look, consumption is really low now. So you might be wondering why the heck am I driving this slow? Um, what? <laughs> Even the leaf overtakes me. No, but you see, uh, this is just an experiment. I don't recommend anyone driving this slow, but it's to see how efficient this car can be at low speed and I want to see if aerodynamics is a problem or if it's some kind of, I don't know, uh, too much friction in the drivetrain or something. So just want to know why the heck this car is so thirsty. Damn, look at this! <laughs> 151 watt of a kilometer. Yeah, so um, um, it means that if you drive really slow, then you can get re then you get far. Uh, over 500 kilometers, 560 or something, I don't know. Well, it depends how many kilowatt hour you have available. I heard that they upped it from, uh, yeah. But, uh, but those, this also means that uh, drag is somewhat significant on this car. Hmm. I believe that the gain is smaller in a Model 3 if you drive at these speeds. Uh, so, I mean, since we're already here, let's try one more run. Uh, maybe have uh, air conditioning on, uh, but try to drive at the maximum speed, which is 110 kilometers per hour. Yeah, in range mode still. Uh, 233 watt per kilometer. What the heck, bro? What are you spending all that energy on? Is it the drag? Is it the air conditioning? Huh? This is only 110 kilometers per hour and it's dry outside and it's nine degrees Celsius. Okay, so if you look at the numbers here, um, it seems like range mode does help, but not that much. But eco mode on the HVAC also helps. So I guess a combination of that, well, by default, if you enable range mode, it will also go into eco mode in the, in the HVAC. So those two help together help actually quite a lot. And then if you drive slow, then it helps even more. And then if you drive faster, then you suck more energy. So one test I haven't tried, but uh, I don't feel like trying it because it's not my car, is to dra draft behind a truck. I bet if you draft behind a truck at let's say 85 kilometers per hour, you can probably, uh, based on the gut feeling here, you can probably go down to 170 something. Yeah, about 170 watt hour per kilometer. And that means, ooh, how much is that? Uh, I think we are getting close to 500 kilometer uh, range, yes. If you have to, then you can draft. You better have some kind of PPF on your hood or whatever then. So anyway, I think that's gonna be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, as always. Thank you for watching and talk to you later.